Hi, and welcome to Jim's Radio Shop. And today we're continuing with the Spartan 99. And our objective today is to uh, align the AM broadcast band and investigate uh, shortwave a little bit further and try to understand why the shortwave is not working on this radio. So most of the tuning takes place under the chassis. So I'm going to tip this up like this. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to relocate your camera and my ball on tight. By the way, just before I do that, here's some of the equipment we'll be using uh, to do this alignment. I'll be using this signal generator, which produces an uh, RF uh, signal. In this case, it's set for the IF frequency, 455 kilohertz. That's an audio generator that we use to modulate the signal coming out of the RF generator up above. And down here is my frequency counter, which you can see says 456, which is the recommended IF frequency for this radio. And by the way, since we have it on screen, here's my power control uh, box with the meter. And with this box, I turn on and off the AC power uh, to the uh, radios I'm working on. And I introduce uh, limiting, current limiting, with these light bulbs, which you can see here. There's actually two of them, one in the back there, one in the front, different wattages. And I either screw in or unscrew. Um, if I want a little less current limiting. And then if I throw this switch upwards, I see nothing's plugged in right now. If I throw this switch upwards, then you'll see this meter go up, which gives me a percentage of the voltage. Right now it's at 100%, so 100% of available line voltage is being supplied. And this meter over here, which reads the actual line voltage, uh, 121 volts right now. A little high in my shop all the time. So that's just some of the equipment uh, that I have, and that's what we'll be using. Oh, also, we'll be using this this meter back here. I can flip on now. Um, yeah, this meter um, is a very precise um, audio meter. It, it uh, measures audio frequency. It actually goes up fairly high, to be honest with you. And this guy is going to be very helpful uh, as we do the alignment, since no one should attempt an alignment with their ears. I almost said ear balls. <laughs> no one should rely on their ears to do an alignment. So let's see where we can put this camera here. Perhaps it can sit right about here. Okay. Lights are a little hot here. I'll just tone them down a little bit if we can. As I discovered earlier, the camera requires much less light than my eyes. And, uh, but the kind of light I need, yeah, it's a little bright. Okay, now we've already done some work, quite a bit of work on this radio. I placed a couple capacitors back in here. We took this coil out and uh, repaired a uh, two broken wires in it. By doing that, we reduced the number of turns on the coil by one. Uh, it looks like it was about 150 turns, so it'd be one turn in 150, not much difference, but it would make some amount of difference. Uh, and hopefully we can compensate, if this is the broadcast band coil, which I think it is, we can compensate for it with these various uh, capacitors. That's my understanding. And we also have a couple of IF cans up here, which will need tuning also. So I have the original written uh, instructions on how to align this set. 
it's very important to follow the instructions when doing this. Uh, most guys with a fair bit of experience can can uh, can wing this, including me. But wherever you have the instructions, it's better to follow them. Now we will need to set off. So we'll shut off our power supply. Quick safety check. Yeah, everything's looking pretty good. There still are some pretty bad looking capacitors in there, so if we find uh, uh, some really bad alignment problems, we might have to go after some of those older capacitors. Hopefully not. Now, the instructions say, and uh, let's see, the instructions say, set the service oscillator to 456 kilocycles. And that's exactly where I have it. And connect the lead to the grid cap of the converter tube, 6K8. Adjust trimmers, CP8, no, C8P, C8S, C9P, and C9S. Okay, and uh, where do I find those? those capacitors. And I need my magnifying lenses here. So excuse me just a second, I'm going to go and put them. I thought I had them with me, but hang on, I have to go get my uh, special glasses. Be right back. Okay, I'm back with my magnifiers. This makes it a lot easier for me to see up close because I'm carting around 55 year old eyeballs here. And some glasses that don't help me at all on close up. Now we're going to try to figure out which coils are which. So, you know, I think I'm, I'm not catching on to the, uh, the P and the S in the identifier. Maybe we can figure that out too. So usually, usually there's a uh, oscillator control. And then one or two RF stages that are tuned. And uh, the oscillator adjustment literally calibrates the front scale pointer. And the other two um, increase the Q of the initial RF circuits, uh, which gives you a better, cleaner signal at the far end. Hey, where's my cup of coffee? Hang on. There's my copy. So I'm looking at the circuit diagram, and what I'm seeing on it, I see a C8, a C7 rather, C6, 
C5. And each of those look like sets of four capacitors. And of course, here's four capacitors right here. So no doubt that's C. Making sure the numbers aren't already written out of here somewhere by somebody else. No. So you know a good guess would be RF, RF, and this would be oscillators up here. Should be able to determine uh, what's what by interfering with these coils when the radio is operating, noting the effect and watching for the oscillator effect. The oscillator effect is the radio tunes up and down the dial. The others, the signal just gets weaker and stronger, stronger and weaker. So what I'm going to do here is I got I need more. Uh, I need more test cords here. Don't have enough, so I'm going to hook up our output level meter. And we'd like to hook this to the oh yeah, the speaker. Let's take the Hawkins speaker here. Forgot to bring that in. You can't operate this set without the speaker plugged in. I'll go get it. Here it is. It's a huge, it's a beautiful speaker. It's taking one little hit. It's got some cracks. I can repair. Those can, can make a, a very bad noise as the speaker tries to push air. The little cracks kind of open up a little bit and the air will pass through the cracks in the cracks in the cone and make a sort of sound only. It doesn't sound like that. It sounds like it sounds something like that. Uh, sometimes very hard to tell it's a speaker that's doing it, so I'll fix those later. But first, we're gonna plug in the speaker, and now oh, I think there's a hum coil in here. Okay, there's the voice coil output. I'll put my meter to the voice coil. The voice coil is a coil of wire that is sitting in the powerful magnetic field of the speaker. And as electricity moves in and out of that coil, let me make sure I get this on the right one. Okay, I think that's good. As the uh, current moves through the uh, voice coil in the magnetic field, the coil is driven back and forth because of the interaction of the electricity in the magnetic field. And as the coil is driven back and forth, it pushes because it's attached directly to the cone. And it pushes the cone back and forth. So it's really quite a, quite a simple idea. And uh, in its later implementations, like this speaker, uh, beautifully done. And there's all kinds of signatures and numbers. Uh, wow, there's a lot on this speaker. Yeah, so a lot goes into building a speaker. That's no small deal. A lot of precision building. So, very good. Let's give our radio a little more light here. Let's 
Too bad I can't tone these down a little bit. How's that look? Well, it's never going to look perfect on uh, in the video. Until everything improves a big notch. Okay. So we want to connect the output of the signal generator to the grid cap of the converter tube, which is this guy here. Okay, so that connection is now made. Still at uh, 456, holding quite nicely. So let's plug the radio in. Power is off. Put on the radio. What happened here? Radio is plugged in. Here it is. My uh, line volt meter. I'll just turn up the camera here a little bit. Okay, not sure you can see these meters. This one here is going to show us the uh, line voltage. When that meter goes up, you know there's power supplied to the plug of this radio. Okay, that's the on off switch. We'll turn it down. We have no antenna on here, and that's on purpose right now. And the band we're on. We're on the broadcast band at that point. I'd say we're all set, so let's bring on the power to the plug on limiting. Put it on limiting just, just in case. What happens is if there's a short circuit in the radio, the limiting light bulb will glow very brightly, telling me that the radio is pretty much a, a piece of wire instead of a thing. So here we go. Okay, very good. You can see the different uh, tube uh, plate currents catching in. Around uh, around ninety percent of the line voltage. Oops. Pretty noisy, eh? Let's left the volume up. Tone working nice. I am working pretty good too. Yeah, let's see what we can tune in. Nothing. There's no antenna connected to this radio. Let's take this. To four fifty oh boy, what is all that? be able to get rid of that hung with the ground wire. Let's try that. Could be from lack of grounding of the signal generator. <laughs> and that's what it was.
That's a little better, isn't it? Now, we're at 455. There you hear the signal. Beautiful. That's just exactly what I'm looking for. There it is on our on our output meter. Excellent. So let it sit for a minute. Let's read the alignment instructions. Set the service oscillator to 456 kilocycles. Connect the lead to the grid cap of the converter to adjust trimmers C8P, C8S, C9P, and C9S. C8P and C8S. So if 8 and 9 show up, C is capacitor. What is P and S? Hmm. Uh huh. Uh, boy, I'm drawing a blank. Now these terms S and P are used all over the place, so I better figure out what they are. Actually, it's 8, 9, and 10. You know, this is an IF alignment, so I would really imagine those are the IF. Not these. Let's see. Okay, look. T1. Hey, there it is. C8. Oh, primary and secondary. P and S are primary and secondary. So there's 8 and right. There's nine. Where's this ten thing? Well, maybe we'll figure out what 10 is as we go along. Um, P, primary and secondary, and, uh, you know, I cannot tell primary from secondary, but it may not matter. It may not matter the order of that precisely. Okay, uh, a little awkward doing this. Now I'm looking straight at the meter while I adjust this. And like I say, you cannot hear this. The adjustments are so precise. You do a bad job of this and you got a radio with all kinds of spurious signals in it. And well, here, I'll, 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 I'll detune it. Okay, so you can hear it disappear and I'll retune it. Beautifully smooth action on this. Okay, do the next one. I guess I can figure out primary and secondary in my physical position here. This would be the primary. 
Can I do this already? <laughs> sure, I see you good. Those are bang on. C10, I think I must have done it before. What did it say? It said C10 primary secondary. So. Staring very intently at the circuit diagram, looking for C10. Imagine there's C9. Where is C10? Did I read that or am I imagining it? 8, 9, 10. Oh, I'm reading the wrong. Uh, Ooh, reading the wrong uh, instructions because this is multiple radios instructions here. So we're back to the 99. 8 and 9, that's all. There is no 10. AFC off. Fully right. Seem to make any difference anyway. I guess I'm supposed to be tuned to. So what's going on there? A little bit of dirt from the tuning coil. Tuning capacitor. But these never made no difference at all, I'm sure. Should make no difference, and it doesn't. Very good. Now, broad. Cast oscillator trimmer. Turn the pointer to 1500 in the broadcast band. Fe feed a 1500 signaling through the antenna terminal and the service oscillator just trimmer C2C. Okay, it's C2C. C3. C2A. Oh boy. There's C two C. It's right. Uh, it's right on the. It's right on the top of the set. So let's set up for that. Can we remove from the grid? Put our signal generator onto the antenna real quick. A little bit of the IF leaking through. I think there's an IF trap in here too. So maybe we can adjust somewhere down the road. Okay, so we'll go up to 1500 on our signal generator. Right around here somewhere. Get a little more signal. Hello. I'm not getting anything. Okay, it's possible we don't have it on the broadcast band. There they are. I didn't have it on the broadcast band. So turn down the volume. Beautiful. Strong signal. Turn that back. Okay, we're not quite at 15. We're a little above 15. A little above 15. So let me tune this down to exactly 15. It's pretty hard to see on this scale. It's really quite a poorly painted scale here. 
Oh, those are the scale markers. Okay, so that would be the marker. Let's make sure the point is perfectly straight. <laughs> Some strange effects from that. There we are, it's pretty good. 1500. Pretty darn close. Okay, so there's 1500. Where's the reaction? So it's reading way high. 1500 is reading 15. Oscillator there. This is the trimmer. Pretty tight. I want to walk this back. This thing's almost as tight as it can go. as I can get it there. Not very good. So there's another you do the other end. another trimmer here. And go down to the other end of the band. Tie it to 600. C4. Where is C4? Let's see where C4 is. C3 is the IF rejector. C4. There's C4. Hmm. Near L7 and L8. Yikes. Hello, show me C4. Anybody, somebody. Yikes. C4. There it is back here. I think that might be it. Doesn't seem to be, does it? Well, let's take it down to 600, do like it says. I'll turn the tuner down to 600. Hey, how come there's a signal there? What? Kind of weird, take it down to 600. Pretty close on the 600. Very close. Let's make sure it's right on. Right on there. Just right on 600. It's perfectly aligned. 
but nothing to adjust there. Let's see if this is the. Uh, see if this is the right. And I hate doing this because if you turn something and it doesn't have any effect, you know you just turn the wrong thing. Need a big, big hunk of screwdriver on this one. Ready? Oh! I want to turn. There it goes. Making no difference. I'm going to leave that alone. That's probably not it. And I'm afraid I just don't see other trimmers. Now, what's the name of that one again? C4. Right near the broadcast core. I'm trying to identify which coil is. None of them appear to be <laughs> involved. Hmm. Nothing. Can't imagine these capacitors are on the top. Well, is it a chance it's one of these gigantic guys staring out at me? Hmm. I really don't think so. Not that many capacitors in here. Going to be another one on the top of the tuning. No, I don't believe so. Bit of a mystery here. It is tuned right on. Okay. So it's accurate at 600, it's a little off, but the high end. I'm just going to crank down the... Uh, can't crank down the capacitor any further. You can always try adding a little bit of capacitance in parallel with it, but we're not going to do that. Next step would be aligning the RF, I imagine. the yeah. broadcast RF with the set tuned to 1500. The oscillator is same frequency adjust trimmers C2A and C2B. C2A, C2B. I think we'll be able to figure out which ones those are. So let's go back up to 1500. Make sure we got it dialed in right. 1500. Of course, it's not really 1500, it's 15.2. It is looking quite well. Yeah. The set tuned to 1500, da da da, 2A and 2B. So that would be on the circuit diagram. 2A. There's 2B. Okay. 
There's two A. These are both uh, up on top here. Three needs for maximum output. No change. No change. I'm so happy about that. No change. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Let's get a better look at it. Do the tip the radio down the roots. Try to make sure it doesn't fall off my bench here. Pretty good. Um, could be the signal's too high. Let's drop the signal back. That's a little better. change at all on that. Have I got the right hey, what's this? I need to find another capacitor. I have to tip this radio down so we go up at the top of it. I see now they Yeah, I can see the one there. Now I know what I'm looking for. Like we're going to listen to an interview on the radio while I'm working from the uh, CBC here in Toronto about our illustrious mayor. So you'll be hearing that kind of rebroadcast if you like while I work. It's just doing the news. Is that always running its journalistic ethics? We can meet a Q debate on that with John Cook of Gawker and Jeffrey Dworkin, formerly of CBC and NPR. This is CBC News. Yeah, well, right after the news, we'll tune that back in. Let's try this. Let's go back to doing the uh, scale alignment. Let's go back to this. Working pretty good, eh? Back to 600 here. Dial this back to 600.
There's uh, 600. And what I want to adjust is the upper frequency one and see what happens. This is the one that's cranked so tight. Okay, drifted it. Where? Okay, so what I'm going to try to do now is bring it back with this other one. Perfect. Okay, that should give us... Pretty good alignment if I do this enough times. There's 600. Six hundred. Back up to fifteen hundred. Now let's turn on the uh, CBC radio here. Here it is. Today he lost two communications officers. Ford says he's eager to turn the page, and in his words, soldier on. Okay. Now you're listening to the CBC right here in Toronto. Parker was a guest on Metro Morning. Cargo Councillor Gary Crawford is a close ally of the mayor and a member of his executive committee. But Yikes. he told Metro Morning today that the resignations of two senior staffers yesterday show it's not business as usual in the mayor's office. I think the mayor really does need to focus on these challenges that he is facing. Uh, yes, he does have his job to do, which is uh, chairing the executive today, but uh, I think he really needs to get his, his house in order uh, you know, before we move forward. But both Parker and Crawford stop short of saying the mayor needs to step down or take a leave of absence to deal with his problems. The trial of the Toronto wow, that, that police officer the of violent takedown of a G20 protester continues this morning. Possible Glenn Waddell has pleaded not guilty to assault causing bodily harm and assault with a weapon. He allegedly struck Dorian Barton at Queen's Park in June 2010. CBC Toronto's Jasmine Seppi this report. Because I was hit from the side, I can't say who it was. Dorian Barton admits that his memory was fuzzy after being struck by what he thought was a police shield and then a baton. The impact knocked him to the ground where he felt several more blows. Barton ended up with a broken shoulder, black eye, and cuts and bruises. Despite Gloria Barrera couldn't admit the injuries. The statement he made was really shocking. The Crown entered into evidence numerous pictures and videos of the arrest. Defense lawyer Peter Browdy suggested none of them show his client, Glenn Waddell, hitting Barton. what happened. I saw an officer run into him with a shield in front of him, knocking him down with the shield, and hitting him with a baton. That's what sort of sprung me into action and taking the photo that I took. Wallace told the judge he recognized Barton on the front page of a newspaper. Six months after the arrest, he contacted him to give him the photos. The SIU reopened its investigation, and police arrested Waddell several months later. Jasmine Sepia, CBC News, Toronto. More Canadians say they can carry on a conversation in both English and French, but a new study also says the percentage of Canadians who are English-French bilingual is declining slightly. It's the first time that's happened in four decades. In the most recent census, okay, around 1,500. 5% of Canadians report they are bilingual. That's down... Off we go to 600. Ten years before. That's this edition of the CBC News. I'm Joel Benson. 600. Lots of birdies in there. Showers right now, 11 degrees in Toronto. We do expect a high in 16. With the risk of a thunderstorm tonight, more shower activity. Low to 15, warmer tomorrow, expecting a high of 25 degrees, a mix of sunny cloud, and a 30% chance of showers. Peterborough and the Park is increasing cloudiness and showers this afternoon.
of these storms sure wouldn't have told the public of their own volition. In fact, you get the clear idea that some of these folks could happily do without an entire industry, and that would be the news business, journalists. In the case of Robin Doug Ford and the Municipal Mess in Toronto and the Mike Duffy Senate scandal, we've heard the distinct sound of grumbling about the press. Lick spittles, scums, maggots, and that's just a generalization. So although apologies have been made, contrition has been expressed. It would hurt more if we didn't see our colleagues at the Star and the Globe and on the Hill doing such important work. And sure, reporters can be pushy, interviewers ask hard questions. We would Back up to 1,500. Fair, of any one in public life. But maybe it's time to remind some of our leaders that the job of a responsible media is to ask questions of politicians Way high. and keep them in check. It's like the mission or vocation of the press to be cheerleaders, nor should it be. Reporters and news organizations need to be rigorous and responsible and courageous and independently minded. It is then that they are really serving the different public. Look around these days. At a time when news organizations are struggling financially, cuts are being made, there's a lot of hard work being done on crime, on war, in the courtrooms, in council chambers of this country. There's something actually exhilarating about much of what the star on the globe and say, Robert Fife of CTV, Andrew Coyne of the National Post, our own national and local reporters at CBC. 600 a.m. On these stories. It feels like we're witnessing real journalism taking place. So to those in the halls of the can't say, Right on. Yeah, that's not too bad. And so do the media. Sticks and stones may break our bones, but there's still a story to do. Jean Domeshi. This okay. is you. Let's try and I'm back. Six point two megahertz. I'll take up around six. Six point two. John Cook on the money he's raised, and Jeffrey Dworkin, formerly of CBC and NPR, on that question. Why am I? And the decline of the evangelical brand. Pastor and author John S. Dickerson joins me to talk about the origins of the evangelical movement and why they may be waning. With her evangelicalism later in the show, but first, Laura Bates on ridding Facebook of images of violence against women. Onward, online virtue. This is Q. Okay. Lots to get to on this show. Waning evangelicalism in about an hour. In about half an hour from now, the man at uh, very much one of the people at the center of the, that crack starter campaign around the alleged video about the uh, mayor of Toronto allegedly engaging in smoking crack. Uh, John, the editor of the campaign, where things are at. That's interesting. What the heck is that? Sources. Uh, but first, we talked before about the issue of. Facebook comedy is on the high of the don't get pregnant. For the last week or so, a new online campaign is stepping up the pressure on Facebook to take action and remove these types of images. Dozens of prominent women's groups and anti-sexism organizations, including Eve Ensler's V-Day group and the White Ribbon Society, are calling on companies to pull their advertising off Facebook, and advertisers are paying attention. A number of companies have... Okay, so that's not the story I wanted to hear. Of course, that's what they would do. What happened here? 9.6. Mm -hmm. It's just no output. Uh, 
nothing. That's the problem. That remains the problem with this radio. So, what you witnessed was the uh, tuning up of the broadcast band and the IF strip uh, in the radio, and an attempt to align the um, uh, the dial. Um, and it's somewhat successful. Uh, that was very accurate at the low end, but not so accurate at the high end. But not that bad for a radio of this sort. Um, Sensitivity seems pretty good. Um, so my power supply capacitors have eliminated the hum. It's as quiet as a mouse. So uh, the radio is working in pretty good shape now. It's required a couple of tubes and uh, replacement of a couple of capacitors. Mm -hmm. And I think that's about it for this guy for now. So I think I'll say goodbye. Thank you very much for watching my video. And uh, I'm not sure if you're going to learn anything from me because it's I'm not doing this as a demonstration. You're actually seeing me do the work, um, which at times can be pretty slow and uh, with lots of moments where I'm really not sure what to try next, to be honest with you. But anyway, we've done a good job on this old guy. Um, he's looking much better. He's a pretty dirty radio when I started on it. I think we'll shut her down. I have that one light bulb I have to get working in there. That's really the issue is how this front panel is working. Let's take a look at that, why don't we, on the next video. So thanks again for watching, and sorry for putting my arm in front of the camera. Tune in again on the uh, next one. Who knows?